Hey guys, Postron here. And today let's talk about my ranged multi-strike Erika 500% movement speed evasion stacker. Now, I wanted to make this video because a lot of people were asking me about this build on stream over on twitch.tv slash palstron. Uh, it looks very impressive, right? Usually in this game, what you have is a very fast movement skill like leap slam or you're whirling around um, or whatever you're doing, you're dashing. But uh, this build has a lot of raw movement speed, which is almost impossible to get without stacking evasion. That is because of the skin of despair body armor, unique body armor that gives you a ton of movement speed the more evasion you have. We get around about 300% movement speed from it, and then we also get other sources. But in total, that would re result in what you see on the screen currently. And this synergizes extremely well with Erika because Erika gives you increased damage per movement speed you have. And on top of that, it also gives you a huge damage multiplier, which we're going to talk about later with a certain hero trait. But yeah, with that said, let's get into the build explanation. So first up, I want to quickly explain why I went evasion stacking, why Erika, why I basically made the choices that I made before we go into the normal stuff with like skills and items. And to fully show you that, I think I need to show you one of the worst skills currently in the game, one of the worst design skills I've basically ever seen in my life uh, playing RPGs, and that is Blink Bow. So in this game, you have to be very fast paced, otherwise you're kind of falling behind. You don't have to, uh, but uh, necessarily this game is very fast. So you kind of want a movement skill that carries you because getting movement speed is usually pretty damn hard uh, so for example on a bow build you're like oh i'm gonna play blink arrow let's blink over there oh now i've had this discussion before with people and most people say you get used to it or something but the thought of me uh somebody who plays a lot to i don't know move around like this basically having to like mirror image in my head where i want to jump to and then run maybe like bad layouts or something and going like against i don't know against walls and then having to move around um basically is a non-starter for me i think this is absolutely atrocious design i think it's fine to have in the game but it being the only movement option for bows and crossbows is insane to me. And I guess if you've never played with this, it's fine. Uh, I know maybe you think it's not that as annoying as I make it out to be, but for me, it really was. So I wanted to get go for movement speed because the only other way to really move around for a bow character, since I really wanted to play a bow character, was moving around. So I thought I would go with a little bit of a gimmick, but a very strong one, which is evasion stacking. Now, usually evasion stackers use a different chest that is very expensive and gives you a lot of damage, but this one here is basically based around movement speed. So Skin of Despair gives you 1% uh, movement speed for every 1,500 evasion, which comes out to round about 300% movement speed on this build, and we fill the rest of the movement speed with some other stuff. More on that later. Uh, we also have some other payoffs. Um, for example, Dumb Voice. This is kind of what this build revolves around. It's the uh, physical damage added as extra lightning per 700 evasion, uh, and then plus one critical strike rating per 750 evasion, which comes out to a lot of base crit. Now, if you don't care about the being that fast, there's a lot of choices you can make to do more damage instead of being fast. That is just what I chose. Uh, secondly, this build is just very good at boss rushing, as you saw in the intro. It's very fast. And I like it in particular because movement speed means that it's also going to function well in bad layouts. Even in a boss rushing strat, you really want to be able to take advantage of some of these cards uh, and basically be able to run bad layouts just as fast as some of the good layouts. And if you're like indoors and there's like walls everywhere, if you're leap slamming and you maybe get stuck somewhere, it's very annoying. With movement speed, it is so damn smooth. And then I also wanted something that has great scaling for high investment. I kind of started out this build with around about 800 FEs and now I have around about 2,000 invested at the end. So that's always an upside for me because I'm looking to um, juice my builds up over time. And I also want to point out that this is definitely not a leak starter. You already need gear to do this stuff. You can't just buy the chest. You need all of the pieces. There's a lot of uniques involved, right? Some of them are not that expensive. Some of them are a little bit more expensive, but you need to have the initial investment. I would say you can start roundabout with like 600 FE. So there's definitely more of an end game style build. If you're looking for a leak starter, I will link uh, the Max Roll uh, Torchlight page down in the description. Now, why did I go Erica? Because she works incredibly well with movement speed because of one node right here, which is called Cat Dive. During multi-strike, there is a 1% chance for this attack to deal damage equal to the max multi-strike count for every 5% movement speed you have. And since we're stacking to 500% movement speed, this chance becomes 100%. So basically, while this is up, you're doing multiple, multiple times your damage. And then you also have plus one maximum multi strike count for every one stack of Stalker you have. Which means that your playstyle will basically revolve around 
walking, shooting, walking, shooting. So this is the stalker right here. Uh, you can also see it down here. Basically, whenever this is on six, you do the most damage, then you attack. Now, usually it would take a little bit of time to do your attack fully. But as you can see right here, my multi-strike is extremely fast. And that is because I invested into a lot of attack speed. And also, I have versatile on my belt. This basically makes it so all the stuff that says attack and cast speed actually counts twice for us because the cast speed also gets converted to attack speed. Now, to show you what I mean, I will quickly uh, show this to you on the dummy. So I'm, I'm just going to press my buttons and I'm just going to stand here and you're going to be like, what the hell? He does no damage. What is even happening, right? 58 million. You would say on a leak starter, that's pretty good, but on a high investment um, build obviously that's pretty mediocre even though we are fast right obviously that is a big upside and not all fast builds have damage but that would still be disappointing however that's just not how you play this build and to show you how crazy this note right here is let's uh, approach this a little bit differently and we also have to dash in between because dash gives us a considerable amount of evasion so let's just dash around right here and as you will see here if between attacks we actually move we will have considerably higher damage i up a little bit here also with the mana let's do this i think i went up to like 900 ish million if this stacks up a little bit more also my fervor has to stack up in total um, this is pretty inconsistent but you will arrive at round about 600 to 900 million dps on uh this kind of gear which will very comfortably get you through tier 8 maps or basically anything that you have to do tier 8 traveler now when it comes to bossing i would say at the very tippity top like uber keegan i wouldn't really recommend it uh, not because it can't do it theoretically but because there's no reason to there's obviously boss killers that are way better at it this definitely excels at anything where you can leverage the insane amount of movement speed that you have as for playstyle, it's actually pretty darn simple but i'm still gonna show it off real quickly now uh, basically what you do is uh you move and then you shoot stuff i know crazy but uh, let's point this out right here. So your skills are basically all cooldown skills that you're just going to activate over and over. Elemental Shock, Brisk Wind, and Bloodthirst. You just press on them whenever they're on cooldown. Um, you dash whenever you can to be faster. And otherwise, you just move. So for example, I would do like this, right? I shoot around, kill stuff, and move, right? That is all you do. And it is an extremely comfy experience and an extremely comfy playstyle. I did kind of screw that up right here. Uh, once you get to the boss, you don't really have to do anything different. One thing you notice, though, is that I'm always stutter stepping. I'm never standing still. And that's not just because I want to be fast, but because our damage comes from moving, right? So I go to the boss right here. Even if he doesn't die immediately, I wanna, I don't want to stand still and attack because if I stand still and attack, I do no damage. As we said, most of our damage comes from the stalker stacks. So you want to shoot move again, shoot, move again, shoot, move again. So you're always on maximum stalker stacks. Now, just in case you're asking, no, I do not have butterfly hunting. Um, this would basically time six or time seven my damage um, to like, I don't know, five billion or something because it gives you cat dive. Now, why is this so insane on this memory? It means that you can have both cat dive and cat walk. And why is that so crazy? Well, cat walk basically makes it so my multi-strike count cannot be interrupted. So basically when you stop attacking and you interrupt it, it's going to keep attacking whenever you attack again, which is really nice because sometimes you don't time it very well. And then no longer lose a stalker after multi-strike ends. If you think about this, the kind of playstyle that we have to go through, even though we get good damage, like it's like this, boom, this, boom. We always have to move like a few meters and then we can attack again to get our fullest damage. Well, if you had this... Every single tap I just made, you can just stand there for three seconds straight and then you have to move, which means your damage is going to go up by like seven to ten times. So talking about Erika, um, obviously we have Hot Pursuit. In general, something a lot of people don't know is that multi-strike works with ranged attacks. Pretty much, you don't need anything special. Um, Erika basically gives you multi-strike chance uh, during Cat's Agility. Cat's Agility is basically just this buff up there that is going to be up whenever you walk a certain amount of distance. I think it's 10 meters. So whenever it's off to refresh it, you just have to walk a little bit. Now, this all plays into why movement speed is so good on this character, because you get effects per meter you moved and you move faster. That means you get that effect faster. And then stalker is this right here. And for every two meter you walk, you get um, one of these stalker charges up to six. And this one is also scaling off of your movement speed once again. And what Stalker does is um, the more Stalker stacks you have, the more damage your multi-strikes do. And Cat's Agility makes it so not only do you get 20% movement speed, all the movement speed you get 
is at 200% of its value converted to increased damage. So for example, we have 500% movement speed. That means we get 1000% increased damage. Then we take have fun, which is usually not the thing most people go for, but it just gives us so much attack speed. On the other hand, interest gives us a little bit of movement speed, which I think is nice if you're not that well geared to kind of get you to that 500% or a little bit before. Um, it also makes cat's agility a little nicer to use. I never found this really that helpful. Um, have fun just makes it way smoother to actually play the build. Uh, cat's punches gives you plus one max stalker stacks. Usually you only have two. Now at, with this one, you have three at level 50. And then each multi-strike deals 10% more damage per stalker stack, which at the end we have six. And once again, the note that this build revolves around, cat dive. This is why we want to get to that magical 500% movement speed number. You don't have to get there, but the higher you get, the more consistent you get this more damage multiplier. And multi-strike count basically just means that it doesn't take you as long to get to your last multi-strike as it usually is. You can kind of see it like minimum charges on like channeling, right? For example, if you had let's say five maximum charges on the channel and three minimum, it always starts at three and goes up to five. That's kind of how multi-strike count works with multi-strikes. And then at the end, we take Cat's Vision. And this is just basically a no-brainer because this gives us another three stalker stacks, three max stalker stacks. So it gets us from three to six. So not only do we get the more damage multiplier from stalker, we also get all the infects per stalker enhanced before and the other node is basically not that great as for items the only ones that are absolutely mandatory uh, are thunder jawbone this gives us one percent lightning damage for every 300 or 400 evasion depending whether you have the corrupted one or not it also gives us a little bit of shock that we don't go too much into but that's definitely something you can look into it also gives us projectile speed defense stuff like that it's an evasion base. It has everything we want. Uh, Skin of Despair. Now, the cheapest ones go for like 2 FE right now. Um, if you can get Corrupted Evasion, that's really good. If you can get plus one level, that's really good. All of that jazz. Uh, then we have Thunder Manipulator, which at this point, this is not really mandatory. Uh, I would say um, Dumb Voice is mandatory though, because you get um, percent physical damage as lightning per 700 evasion. This is basically a more multiplier because we're fully physical and converting to lightning uh, and also plus one critical strike rating per 750. This counts um, on top of the base critical strike chance, basically. So three big payoffs, Thunder Jawbone, Skin of Despair, and Dumb Voice. This is why we're stacking evasion. Now we need some other support. How do we not die? Well, you're going to die here or there, um, especially to stuff like dots. If you're not careful enough, you're very fast. And the way AI works in this game is nothing's really ever going to hit you. Now, what you have to understand is our evasion is at 95%. So that means only one out of 20 hits is actually going to connect with us. And then we also have guttural, which gives us a so to say, cheat death. Now, the normal one is totally fine. The normal one has a cooldown of eight seconds, but with six seconds, you're even uh, less likely to die because this basically means that if you get hit, 20 hits connect with you, you get downed. You have another one, right? Like until that cooldown is back up again. So in a time frame of six seconds, they have to hit you twice through evasion. And we also have spell evasion, which we're going to go into a little bit later. And you can also uh, evade certain dots or stuff that looks like dots. So uh, in total, it's not going to happen as often, but it's not a tanky build by any means. And like I said, Thunder Manipulator is uh, basically just a little bit more uh, shock. Uh, now, you could also go for Fervor Gloves right here. I solved that with a memory, but you don't have to. Uh, these gloves are the most replaceable one and also one of the more expensive ones in this build around about 200 ish um fe now as for the belt you definitely 100 percent want versatile this mod alone gives you around about 160 to 170 percent attack speed it is completely ridiculous and irreplaceable um yeah everything else doesn't really matter obviously the the more good mods you have here the better um now as for boots valeries are kind of gg because they have a of evasion they also give you blur which means you can basically phase through enemies there's no enemy collision it also gives you a little bit of evasion and um, chance to avoid hits uh and on top of that this this corruption is completely unnecessary all this corruption does is basically usually it's 10 percent chance now it's always but you hit so often that this is basically a brick 
Now, you also get additional projectile damage while Blur is up, which is always. Then our two rings. Now, you can either go for double chaotic endings or you can go for one rare ring. If you go for a rare ring, you definitely want flat physical damage because that gets multiplied by all the physical damage as extra lightning. And that is absolutely huge. Uh, if you want to cap your resistances right now, like I said, I don't need to cap my resistances. I don't really get hit at all. And if I get hit, I have my insurance right here but if you want to go for a more balanced approach that's totally fine definitely use a raring what i'm doing right now is basically there's two mods you have to get and that is you want on both rings 14 percent crit strike rating per stack of agility blessing i think it goes from 12 to 14 this mod is incredible and basically with the kind of like burst playstyle that we're running you don't want to miss your crit it's just so damn bad so that one has to be on both rings and then on one of the rings you want to have the normally 20 percent chance it makes no difference it's basically a brick chance to gain agility blessing per two meter you move uh, if you see up here uh these are the agility blessings so let's really quickly let it run out and then we can walk and you can see how fast we get them right back and they don't really run out. They refresh each other. Actually, I think I fucked up. But uh, basically, yeah, you can see how fast they refresh. We just walk around and they just go back up to full. Then other mods that are really good are um, chance for critical strikes to grant focus blessing because this basically gives you 16% chance to deal double damage because you get four charges, which you otherwise wouldn't. And then I also get maximum agility blessings on both because this is very good because they give us more evasion rating. More on that in the talent section. Now, as for talents, let's quickly talk about them. We're using Goddess of the Hunting, Marksman, and Blade Runner. In Goddess of the Hunting, this is how the passive tree looks like right here. And uh, we're using, uh, first up, Paralyzed, because it reduces enemy lightning res. And nothing really here is that great. We're not really stacking dexterity. This doesn't fit. Um, we're using Rushed. It gives us movement speed. We we'll always have the 35% more damage up. If you wanted to go more into a shock kind of angle, you could think about Impermanence. But I think Rushed is basically a no-brainer. On the passive trees, we're basically focusing on everything that has movement speed, everything that has evasion, and then everything that has damage. One thing I want to point out uh, before we go on is I didn't take a lot of these lightning damage or increased damage nodes. And that is basically because these are additive to something like increased damage from the Thunder Jawbone. And if we think about how much damage this gives us, um, spoiler alert, it's going to be around about 1,800% damage. And then also from Erika... Because we're converting movement speed to increase damage as well with the cat's agility, we're getting another 1,000%. Now, so now think these 1,800% increased damage that we have, and on top of that, another 12% is just going to make no difference. So then we have Marksman, and the tree looks like this. And what we're doing with the talents is, first up, the Euphoria, uh, max agility blessing stacks plus one, and 5% additional, so more evasion per Agility Blessing, this is a more multiplier, so it's on top of everything else. We have 8 Agility Blessings without really trying much, so we get 40% more evasion. And um, on top of that, we also get Master Escapist. You may evade spells, minus 35% additional evasion on spell damage. This means that on spell damage, we have a little bit less evasion. However, it's still going to go up to like a 90-ish percent um, chance to evade spells. Um, overall, if you get killed, it's by spells usually, but only by very, very fast taking spells. Because like I said, you have basically a, a free life as well every 6 to 8 seconds. Now, uh, on top of that, we're using Blade Runner. Blade Runner is very synergistic with the multi-strike kind of theme. Uh, so this is how these nodes look like right here. We don't take too much from this tree, but it's still worth because the talents are so goddamn good and there isn't really much else to do. Conductive is really strong because it basically gives your shock a meaning. If you don't go conductive, I would probably just scrap shock altogether. But then there is not really a good alternative here because the main skill we're using isn't really a lightning skill. And then the absolute no-brainer and one of the biggest reasons we're running this is quick advancement. Multi-strikes deal 55% increasing damage. Just in case you're wondering, this is actually more damage. It is a translation error. As for skill setups, I was quite lazy here. You can definitely improve a lot. As you can see here, I'm not even using all my energy. Um, so if I got another three energy on my gear and stuff, you could put in another five link, for example. But it was just so goddamn unnecessary. There's also a lot of things you can do with your auras. I would just like try out whatever you like. Uh, you can go low life even, like even more low life than I go already. Because if something hits you, it's most likely going to one shot you anyways. But in total, that's not what I went for. What I went for is uh, first up, what is my main skill? It's split arrow. Now, why am I using split arrow? Well, no particular reason. It, it just performed the best. Now, if we look at ranged skills in general, 
uh, bow-based range skills that I can use. You will see a lot of things here, right? Lightning Shot looks good, just got nerfed, is not really that great anymore. Ice Shot is decent. Um, all of these things are well and fine, but uh, if you look at how much damage Ice Shot deals and how much damage Lightning Shot deals versus Split Arrow, they're around about the same, but Split Arrow also has six projectiles already, which means we don't need to go for any other, like, I don't know, additional projectiles through something like, I think actually, um, it's like projectile, right? So we go projectile right here. You don't need something like multiple or greater multiple projectiles, basically saving you a, a support slot. And also it doesn't give you a less damage multiplier. So that's why I went with split arrow, but I'm gonna be honest, you can just try out whatever you want. This is basically just a vehicle for the damage and the movement speed that we have. And interestingly enough, one thing you can actually do is you can go for a corrupted skin of despair, which says 1% projectile speed per 1,500 evasion. And then what that does is you can swap to Reign of Arrows if you want to. Now, you're going to lose all your movement speed, basically. But what Reign of Arrows says is 100% of the skill's additional projectile speed also applies to the skill's additional damage. Basically, you'll get like 300% um, projectile speed, which is also 300% more damage for the Reign of Arrows. Overall, I just really don't like the playstyle. It's very much not ranged. It's kind of slow for how fast we are, but uh, you can try that out. I kind of discarded the idea pretty quickly as for supports i'm using electric overload it just gives you a lot of damage high voltage same thing a little bit of shock themed even if you're not shock themed just 35 percent additional damage is already good enough um, now this gives you more damage projectile speed projectile speed is actually a lot better than you think it is it does really scale our damage but it means that the arrows will be in front of us instead of like lacking behind because we're so fast right they have to kind of like um, be on top of us. Uh, we're also using critical strike support. There is supports that are a little bit more damage, but this means our crits are way, way, way more consistent. And then on top of that, obviously, multi-strike support, which is probably the most important one. Now, then we're going to do this one a little bit later. Actually, let me maybe go up here so I don't uh, hover over anything. Okay, so next up, Brisk Wind. Uh, this is basically just a buff that gives you a ton of evasion while activated. So it also gives you a little bit of increased movement speed. Um, with the supports, we basically just make sure that we get more duration, less cooldown recovery, so it's basically always up. The same is true for our other buff, which is Bloodthirst, which gives us more attack speed, which is additional attack speed. And since we have Versatile and we're converting cast speed to attack speed, that is why we're so goddamn fast. While attacking, we also get a little bit of movement speed. The degen doesn't really matter. We usually just leech it back immediately. Um, then we have Mania, just to make it a little bit more efficient. Mass Effect, same thing, just gives us a bigger buff. Uh, and the same for soul focus gives a little bit of that now um as for movement skill we're using blink and blink is basically just there because it has the lowest cooldown and um, we have a support here that is incredibly important which is emergency avoidance 49 percent evasion per stack of buffs this stacks up to four times which is almost 200 percent evasion it's absolutely cracked you always want to have this up if possible so the lowest cooldown will mean that this buff is going to be up the most uh, also, Periodic Burst, it gives us attack and cast speed, which once again, it's basically 60% attack speed because the cast speed gets converted. And then just cooldown recovery and quick mobility um, to have our emergency avoidance stacks up as much as possible. Then, uh, just to explain the elemental shock right here, I have a cast on crit setup with summon spider tanks. Now, um, basically, these are just there to de debuff my enemies. On its own, it doesn't really do much. But the cool thing about them is they cost 5 mana on all levels. And uh, cast on crit doesn't reserve that much. That's times 500. It, it reserves like 25 mana. It doesn't make any difference. So it's kind of free other than the slots that it takes. And then you can run Elemental Shock. And this basically says that enemies debuffed or hit by your allies, sorry, uh, get debuffed by minus 25.5 resistance, which means that on our main skill, we don't have to use something like Lightning Penetration and we can still uh, be really strong against high resistant enemies. On top of that, we also have Cast on Crit Blizzard, which gives the enemies another minus 15 Lightning Risk. We also have a Curse on Hit setup with Electrocute. This basically just additional Lightning damage taken. Also more chance to shock enemies. Uh, Abyssal Hatred is just there as a little bit of Curse effect. Uh, curse on hit is nice because you obviously we're so fast we don't want to apply um, the curse every single time as for auras now i would say precise projectiles only use this if you can this gives you a lot more damage and a lot of projectile speed but if you want to be for example a little bit tankier and you don't want to reserve your life then uh, maybe cut this for example however for the rest i will say it's pretty damn nice to have magical source at level 20 is kind of necessary you can play around with levels however much you need to sustain all the mana drain. Uh, as you can see right here, uh, the 
attack itself actually isn't that bad but if you use all your skills you can see right here my mana goes down significantly and if i wouldn't have that or also the mana regeneration role on this affinity which you might not have right you have to play around with it now you can also kind of counter that with certain passes which i did before uh, yeah, you can take this right here, right? It takes four points, you get a little bit of mana, which is useless, but then you get the five mana restored on hit. Or if you're going to use a rare ring, you can also fix that on the ring, either with mana gain on hit or with minus mana cost. And other than that, um, the only thing that's like absolutely necessary is definitely nimbleness. It gives you straight up evasion and also more evasion if you have the precise version. Uh, swiftness, same thing. Gives you movement speed if you have the precise version. Cooldown recovery rate. Uh, we put this on life with seal conversion. Uh, so that's basically just that. Now, as for uh, relics and memories, I have the Void Eater right here. I bought this one very, very early. Uh, it is now extremely expensive. I wouldn't recommend put all your money into this. I would get the core first and then maybe farm for it. Uh, this gives me a lot of increased effect of my hero relics. But some alternatives would be any normal relic that gives you something akin to multi-strike chance, increased critical strike chance, increased critical damage. Basically, most relics that you could find yourself. Uh, I think there is also a unique alternative somewhere here. Yeah, it's the Cat's Vengeance Diary. I don't know how expensive this is right now. Okay, one slot you're probably not going to want. Just make sure that you have free slots. I guess this would be like the mid-budget tier category, which is obviously not really budget, but you get my drift. Otherwise, I wouldn't really actually buy this. I would maybe upgrade into a Void Eater later. Uh, if you don't know, uh, this is just the best relic in the game currently. It is very expensive, though. Mine is not perfect. The perfect ones are absurdly expensive. Um, but however, what I have in here is number one, the tips for cats with movement speed and the best mod that you can have on memories, which I would always take if you can. Uh, Multi-strike deals 4% additional damage with each strike for every stack of stalker that you have. Now, you have six stalker stacks, so that means you get a total of 24% more damage from just this one mod. And movement speed, obviously, very important. Now, obviously, my rolls aren't perfect. Uh, you can get this up to 20%, but that was a little bit too expensive for me. Um, same on the second one right here. And on the end here, I am getting uh, Fervor with Chaotic Oracle. Now, just to clarify, usually you have to have a source of has fervor in order for this kind of stuff to work this translation once again is really sloppy because it does actually work this does give you not just the points it also gives you the initial fervor as for leveling i will link you to milky bk's leveling guide for erica down in the description on max roll uh, once again i want to stress this this is not a league starter you don't want to start with this build there's way better starters this is something you progress into once you get a little bit of currency. That's about everything with the build. I'm having an absolute blast with it so far. I'm probably going to play it a few more days. If you want to check it out over on twitch.tv slash palstron, definitely do so. And yeah, I hope this guide could help you out a little bit and uh, see ya. But that's it for the video. If you liked it, give it a thumbs up. And if you haven't already, subscribe. As always, a huge shout out to my Twitch subscribers and my Patreons. I couldn't do videos like this without you. Thank you so much for the support. And yeah, once again, if you're looking for a really good boss rusher, uh, this is most likely somewhere around the top of your list once again if you want to kill bosses probably better alternatives out there i hope um you enjoy the character if you end up playing it and uh yeah with that being said since i still don't have a slogan see you next time